Welcome to Investigation 2.1. In this investigation, we are investigating why intercepts other than one. We have the focus question for this investigation. What information do you need to write an equation that represents an exponential function? So paying attention to this concept of what information is necessary to be able to write an equation. So for this particular investigation, we are specifically looking at y-intercepts. And if we remember with y equals mx plus b equations, those linear equations, we were looking at b being our y-intercept. So we need to think about what is that space or what is shown as our y-intercept with exponential functions. So let's begin on a problem. We have this situation with water hyacinths. These are, these are plants, which experts say double in area every 5 to 15 days, and they're expanding across Africa's giant Lake Victoria, 25,564 square miles. The foreign plant has taken over more than 769 square miles of the lake and is growing exponentially. Using estimates, create a table following the, uh, following the growth of the water hyacinths on Lake Victoria if they continue to grow untreated. So we need to make some estimates, or we, we need to look at some of the estimates that they're providing to us. Lake Victoria is estimated to be approximately 26,000 square miles. The starting area of the water hyacinths is 770 square miles. And the hyacinths are doubling in area every 10 days. So we're taking an average between the 5 and the 15 days. We need to write an equation that represents the growth pattern of this plant. So we have the water hyacinth, uh, the total lake, the, the total space of the lake is 26,000 square miles, but we have a starting area of 770 square miles. So if we we're to start out at day zero, we're looking at 770 square miles of this lake being taken up. And the water hyacinths are doubling in area every 10 days. So let's make a little bit of a table here. So what information do we need to be able to write an equation? Well, we've kind of underlined it, but what's helpful for me when I think about this sort of information is to make a table. So we have days, and I'm going to look at my days as groups of 10. So I'll say 1, but that represents 10 days. If I say 2, that re represents 20, 10 more days have passed, so 20 days, and so on. And then we're looking at area. So to start out with, we have 0 days have gone by, and we're already at 770 miles that have square miles that have been covered. If we look at the next 10 days that have gone by, or so the first group of 10 days, we're now at 100 or 1,540 square miles. The next set of 10 days, so now we're 20 days that have gone by, we would have this amount be doubled, and so that means we are at 3,080. The next 10 days will have gone by, so now we're at about a month, 30 days. We have 6,160 square miles that have been taken up by the plant. 40 days would give us 12,320 square miles, so we're almost at half the size of the lake, which is pretty substantial. If we're at half the size of the lake, we can only guess if we're doubling each time, Ten more days go by, we are pretty much covering the lake. We are at 24,640 square miles. So, 50 days and we have almost covered the lake. So, in, in between that 50 and 60 day mark, we will be up and over this amount and we'll be somewhere around 48 to 49 thousand square miles that would have been covered if the lake were that large. So we need to write an equation with this information. We see each time we have a new day or new set of 10 days go by, we are doubling our information. It's doubling. As well, we have a starting value already that is 770 that's kind of leading us off with all of this. 
So if we're looking to write an equation for this, we would want to say maybe the area of this plant is going to be doubled every time we add a new exponent, and each of those exponents represents 10 days. So if we had 1, that's 10 days have gone by, and our amount has doubled from our initial 770. So if we put in a 1, 2 to the first power, that just equals 2, and we have 770 as our initial value. If I say 2 times 770, I'll get this 1,540. So I'm going to add in my initial value, oops, not 1,540, sorry, of 770 square miles as our initial value. So here is our equation. Now moving on. Let's make a graph of this equation. So let's zoom in here a little bit. So we have our equ we have our graph here. Our equation is y is equal to 770 times 2 raised to the power of x, or the number of days that have gone by. So let's do a little math magic. I'm going to create a scale along the bottom, and then I'm going to create a scale on the y-axis as well. So hold on a second. Okay, so I have now created a scale. We have a scale that goes by days and groups of 10. So that 1 doesn't represent just one day, it's 10 days. So we have 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s along the x-axis. And my y-axis, we have our area in terms of 5,000s. So to start off with, we have a point that was at 0, 0,770. So that is approximately there on this graph. We then have 1 at 1,500, and so we are approximately here. We then go for our 20-day mark. We're at 3,080. At our 30-day mark, we're at 6,160. So we're getting a little bit more steepness going. For our 40-day mark, we're at 12,320. So we're going to be right below that point. And for our 50-day mark, we are almost completely covering the lake at 24,640 square miles. 24,640 square miles. And considering this place is just under... Um, 20, or it's just a little over 26,000 miles, we know that it is essentially going to be off the charts later on. So we're going to just connect the dots a little bit right here and show this exponential growth. I'm going to erase some of this line that I didn't mean to draw in the first place. So there's some of our exponential growth. And there's our graph of our equation. So we can see that this growth is happening fairly quickly with this um, epidemic of proportions when it comes to hyacinth. The initial values of the equation were taken at the end of March. By the end of April, 30 days later, how much of the surface of the lake will be covered? So 30 days later, let's think about our table that we had. So we're looking not at the 1 mark or the 2 mark, or the, and we're looking at the 3 mark. That's our 30-day point. So we need to look at our table. So let's move up to our table where we have that. And that 30-day mark, we have 6,160 square miles covered by the water hyacinths. So we have 6,160 square miles covering the lake. Do notice that I labeled my work. Lastly, how many months will it take for the plant to completely cover the surface of the lake? How many months? So looking back at our table, let's try to figure out how many months are taking over, or does it take to take over the surface of the lake? How many months? So we know it's a little bit more than five and almost six, or a little bit more than five and not even close to six, so it's just close to five. Five represents 50 days, so five times 10, because each of those groupings was 10 days, 50 days. And 50 days is approximately one month, 
and 20 days. So we're looking at 1.66 repeating months. Because when we think about a month, it's 20 versus 30 or 31. And if we were to do a little bit of fraction simplifying, we'd get rid of a zero on each one, and we have two-thirds. So 1.66 months, and those water hyacinths have taken over. So what I'd like you to do is continue to work through Investigation 2.1. After you've done that, try your hand at the homework, and if you have any questions, please ask. But think very carefully about what information do you need to be able to write an equation for an exponential function. Enjoy!